You can't judge a book or magazine by its cover, but you can certainly judge the covers themselves. And for decades after its February 1925 debut issue, the New Yorker magazine's covers projected a sophistication befitting its literary pedigree. Amusing, ironic, sometimes iconic, like Saul Steinberg's view of the world from New York City, and many bucolic, an escape from the worries of the world. Then in 1993, Francoise Mouly became art editor. And then over here, this is... <laughs> oh, well, this was the beginning of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Don't talk about it, basically. And we did everything we could to make sure that people discussed it. Under Mouly, the magazine's covers are more often political and provocative. We all want images that will be relevant, images that will make you laugh, images that will move you. Here's Monica Lewinsky as Mona Lisa. Well, she looks quite beautiful there, I have to say. Hey, she really does. And President Bill Clinton answering questions about his affair with that woman. And remember when vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin said she could see Russia from her home state of Alaska. But they're not all satirical. Here's a commemoration of the inauguration of Barack Obama and the cover from the first issue after the 9-11 attacks with the only appropriate color combination, black on black. How many covers is it so far then for you? It's over 950. Mouly came from Paris to New York to study architecture, then married author and artist Art Spiegelman. He did that 9-11 cover. Together they published an avant-garde comic book before Mouly came to The New Yorker. From her office over Times Square, she reviews cover submissions and works with artists like Christoph Niemann. I love working for The New Yorker because The New Yorker for illustrators really is like the Olympic Games of our discipline. And every week is a competition. After the killing of Osama bin Laden, hundreds of ideas were submitted. Only one would be chosen. I asked them to send the rough sketch. Don't think about it. Don't censor yourself. I need to see a range of emotions and a range of um, reactions to event, and it's very useful to me. So image that we chose. Osama bin Laden being erased, being sort of snuffed out. The final decision on cover art is not Mouly's alone, nor is it by committee. It's just the two of us. Just David Remnick is the magazine's editor. What defines a successful cover? Sales? No, absolutely not sales. For us, it's what we like, what causes people to laugh or to talk about it or provoke discussion. I want them to push the boundary to see where the boundary can be from week to week. Pushing too far may not make the magazine, but in many cases, it made this book, Blown Covers, Mouly's collection of would-be New Yorker covers that were a bit too daring. I think I've been trying to do Marilyn Monroe upskirt satires of that particular image, and I've tried it with, uh, you know, a woman in a burqa. Barry Blitt has drawn 70 covers, more than any living artist. Yet a lot more of his submissions have not made the cover. If this didn't make it last week. With the Secret, Secret Service, Service scandal. Institution scandal. This one of Tiger Woods golfing with many holes. I kind of would have liked to have seen that on the cover. One image that did make the cover? In 2008, then candidate Barack Obama as an Islamic terrorist and Michelle Obama as a Black Panther fist bumping. To Blit and many liberals, it was a satire of a right winger's view of the future first couple. But editor David Remnick received scads of complaints from the left. The biggest response, Mo, was, I get it, but those people out there, the unwashed masses in those other flat states in the middle of the country, they couldn't possibly get it, and they will use it as an iconography, a uh, literal-minded iconography that Obama is unpatriotic, et cetera, et cetera. Is that a that little bit of a condescending? Happened. I thought it was totally <laughs> condescending. Four years later, Barry Blitt still isn't sure the joke landed. The, the fact is, it was so misunderstood that they're obviously, you know, I can't say, you know, they're all crazy and I'm not. But Francoise Mouly stands by that cover and every other in her nearly 20-year career at The New Yorker. You love your job, don't you? I think I have the best job in the world. 
and there's plenty of wall space yet to be covered. Every week is a creative puzzle to solve. Yeah, it's like the front page.